Hello physics fans, this is question 7 from AQA High Tier 2020. An electric kettle was switched on. Figure 10 shows how the temperature of the kettle changed over time. So just to draw out, we've got obviously got a nice straight bit here, a bit of a curve at the end there, and a bit of a flat bit at the start. Here's the first question. When the kettle is switched on, the temperature of the water did not immediately start to increase. Suggest one reason why. Well, most kettles have some kind of heating element in them and it takes that heating element some time to warm up before it's going to start heating the water. In this case, around about 10, 15 seconds, something like that. So this is because the heater element has to turn on and heat up. Next part of the question asks, tells us that the energy transferred to the water in 100 seconds is 155,000 joules gives us a figure for the specific heat capacity and asks us to find the mass of water in the kettle. So let's shrink that down a little bit, give myself a bit more space to write. You will recall no doubt that delta E equals mc delta theta. Delta E being the thermal energy that's gone into the water, so the useful energy if you like. And we're given that it's 155,000. Mass is what we've got to find, and we've got C as for 200. But what about delta theta? Well, the question talks about the first 100 seconds. So if we go up to the 100 mark, you can see that the final temperature is going to be 100. And the starting temperature, well, that's down here. That's 22 degrees. Therefore, delta theta is 78 degrees C. And it's worth writing that down because you'll get a mark for that. Next job then is to rearrange this equation delta E is mc delta theta so that we end up with m equals so the first thing I would suggest is if you look this c is multiplying on the right hand side so we do the opposite we divide everything by c therefore we get delta E over c equals mc delta theta over c and of course those two c's cancel out leaving us now with delta theta on this side and we'll divide everything by delta theta then we'll have m on its own by the way this isn't a 4 it's a cancelled out c so let's divide by delta theta now so delta e over c in brackets all divide by delta theta equals m now those of you that are smart which of course is all of you will realize that if you have a triple decker fraction like this, I call them triple deckers, they're horrible things. But that's the same thing as moving that delta theta, in this case, to multiply by the C. In other words, M is going to be equal to delta E over delta theta times C. Right, so now we can put in the numbers as we said before. So 150, oh, oops, 155. Five. See what I did there? We'll come back to that in a minute. 155,000 over 78 times 4200. When you type this jolly lot into your calculator, you should get 0 0.4731 blah blah blah. Just goes on and on and on. And of course, you will know that the question is asked for two significant figures. Therefore, that means that the mass equals 0 0.47, don't forget some units, kilograms. ka -ching, and that's the answer. Now you wouldn't expect me as a fully signed up physics teacher not to have a little nag at this point because some of you I know are so good at physics that you'll just do a bit of calculation on a bit of paper and write down 0.47. But did you notice I did a silly thing? I typed in 150,000 rather than 155. So if I'd followed the smart person's route through the question, I'd have got it wrong, wouldn't I? Therefore, since there are five marks, show the marker what you're doing. Make friends with the marker, I always say. It's worth it. Last part, 7.3. This is such a great question. It makes the heart of every physics teacher sing for joy because it's just a little bit beyond the usual stuff. Maybe it's a question that separates your eight from your nine. I don't know. Either way, once you get into it, it's not as bad as you think. It says, the straight line section of figure 10 can be used to calculate the useful power output of the kettle. I'll just move that down out of the way okay so we're talking about the power output here so first of all let's remember that power equals energy over time 
Now, going back to the previous part, you'll remember we calculated delta, we used delta E rather, I should say, the energy in. So we can also say from here that power times time equals energy. And we've already got a formula for that. It's delta E equals mc delta theta. Now you might think to yourself, and it's a good question, how can you say that delta E is the same as E? Because it hasn't got a delta out the front. Well, it is though, because delta E is the useful energy gone into the water to heat it up. And E is the energy provided by the kettle that is useful. It says useful power output in the question. So they're the same thing, aren't they? Therefore, we can say that power times time equals mc delta theta. So that's the first part of the question dealt with. Now we've got to think about this other thing in the question where it said, or it drew your attention to the straight line section. Well, that's obviously this bit, isn't it? Somewhere between roughly those two figures or those two marks, I should say. Now, whenever you see a straight line in a graph in physics, there are two things that are going to jump into your mind. Is this proportional? Maybe I should say directly. And the other thing is, what's the gradient? And in this case, it's the gradient that's going to be useful. It actually says that. Well, not in as many words, but if you kind of get what they're saying, it's hinting at it. And you know that the gradient of any graph is the change in whatever is on the y-axis divided by the change in whatever is on the x-axis. OK, so what have we got on our y-axis? Well, it's temperature. So the gradient, I'm just going to call it grad, equals change in temperature. Ooh, looking a bit familiar. And over on the x-axis, we've got time. So under here, we can say T. But really, we should have delta, shouldn't we? Because remember, it's changing it. In this question, delta T and T are again the same thing, in much the same way that E and delta E were. Right, now can we find this gradient buried in this formula? Well, let's go back and rearrange the power times time formula. So if we do that, we get that power times time. So this is just writing it out again so we can see it. Let's bring this T over to the other side. Therefore, we can say that the power equals mc delta theta over t. And remember, it's OK for us to write delta t. Right, we'll look at this. We now have the gradient buried in our formula. Therefore, we can say that the useful power of the kettle is equal to the mass of water. I'll just draw that M again. The mass of the water times the specific heat capacity times the gradient. And that, physics fans, is the answer.